Hi, my name is Abby, and today I'll be talking about my research so far on the representations of overweight women in sitcoms versus dramas. I believe that it's important to study this topic because there is a lack of positive overweight female representation in television and in the media in general, and I believe that by researching this issue that I can hopefully make a tiny sliver of difference. Before starting, I just want to state my thesis, which is that overweight women are represented differently in sitcoms versus dramas. I'm going to start off this presentation by introducing you to the characters that I chose to analyze, as well as give a brief description of the sitcoms versus dramas. Then I'll get into the types of interactions that these characters had, how they were represented, and if they were made fun of. I'll provide my coding sheets to give a better visual idea of what I captured for my content analysis. Speaking of content analysis, let's quickly discuss how I structured my research method. Because I knew that just a content analysis wouldn't be enough to back up my thesis, I decided to add a coding sheet to the mix. One, to give me data that I could look back on and count, and two, make me look at least a little bit smarter. Just kidding. My sample was modeled a little, a little after one of the studies from my literature review by Bradley Greenberg, since I felt like his coding sheet was the most similar to mine. I watched the first seasons of the four television shows that I chose, and I was mainly looking for how these characters were treated by other characters in the show, and how the creators made the other characters interact with each other. Briefly, I want to discuss the difference between sitcoms versus dramas. Sitcoms are a genre of comedy centered around a set of characters who carry over from episode to episode. They tend to run for about half an hour, and there's no real emotion going into the show. It's, it's very comedy based. There's no character drama brought on to the next episode or even the next episode after that. Dramas, on the other hand, are a genre of television that follows a storyline and characters that flow from episode to episode. There's a lot of drama, hence the name, and is often very emotional, easily, easy to get invested in. Let's meet the characters. The first character I chose to analyze was Roseanne Barr from the comedy sitcom Roseanne. She is the main character of the show, she is the matriarch, and she actually co-wrote the show, so it was very interesting to see how she portrayed herself in the show. The next character I chose to analyze was Tasty from Orange is the New Black. I chose Tasty because I've always loved her character, and I definitely thought that she deserved more attention. She's not a main character. Well, she is a main character, but she's not the main character. She's definitely a side supporting character, but she shows up enough where she's definitely recognizable. The third character I chose to analyze was Molly from the sitcom Mike and Molly. She is a woman, a teacher, who met her boyfriend Mike at a overweight support group so naturally the show was definitely going to have some weight related undertones and you'll see that in my coding sheet and lastly in the one that I didn't get to yet is Kate from This Is Us and just by knowing kind of the basis about the story I know that her storyline revolves around her weight so that'll be very interesting to see as far as coding sheets go. So starting with Roseanne the first season had about 23 episodes, and they were 30 minutes each as per standard sitcom time. She appeared on screen over 100 times. She is the main character, so naturally she's going to be in every single scene. There were maybe like two scenes that she wasn't in. Overall, she the whole show revolved around Roseanne. Her weight was very rarely made fun of, and the three times that it was made fun of, it was made fun of by herself. Um, there was one time where she made fun of it vocally and the other time it was just a kind of incentive that the audience it was between the, her and the audience which I thought was very interesting. The second time, the third time she was made fun of was by this random drunk guy at a bar that barely knew her. She had romantic act interactions in the show. She was married to her husband Dan so there were about one, ep one romantic interaction per episode. She had platonic interactions. I counted those with her family, her co-workers, and her sister, which is, I guess, family. She had positive, most of them were positive interactions. Only negative interactions were fights that she had with Dan or with Jackie, her sister. Overall, it was very interesting to see that she was not made fun of for her weight within her family circle. She was made fun of from the outside and only once by that one guy because as I mentioned before she is the matriarch she, the show is based on her real life so there's not gonna be a lot of people who make fun of her in the show and plus no one wanted to make fun of Roseanne. Roseanne was 
a great character. She was a great mom. She was very funny, very likable. And I was very pleasantly surprised that she was not made fun of as much as I thought she was going to be. Moving on to Mike and Molly. The first season had 24 episodes, again, 30 minutes each. Molly appeared on screen over 100 times. Now the show is called Mike and Molly, so both Mike and Molly have split screen time. So Mike appeared on screen just as much as Molly did. But I was obviously focusing on Molly's character. Her weight was made fun of in like a negative way about 11 times, but most of them again were by herself, and a couple of them were by her mom. Nobody else made fun of Molly besides herself and her mom. Her weight was mentioned in a non-comedic way at the weight loss support groups, talking with Mike. Again, there was no real comedic weight undertone in the show. And these kind of interactions, these weight related interactions took place within only the first couple of episodes of the show as we were getting introduced to Molly. And as the episodes kind of went on, her weight, it, you weren't even thinking about it as you continued to watch the show. Which is very interesting because Mike, on the other hand, was made fun of for its weight in literally every episode by everyone from his co-workers, his parents, Molly's parents, even Molly. His weight was made fun of so much, but Molly's weight was really never made fun of, which was very interesting to see the, the sides of it. She had 30 romantic interactions, much like Roseanne. Her interactions occurred only with Mike, who was her, who is her boyfriend. She had about 45 platonic interactions. I counted those as with her family and some of Mike's co-workers. And out of those interactions, 44 of them were positive, 15 of them were negative, some of the rest of them were neutral. Overall, again, very pleasantly surprised that nobody else really made fun of Molly besides like herself and her family members. And it was very interesting to see that because I went into it with the pre-notion that, you know, other people would be making fun of these characters, but it was really self-internalized or done by someone who was really close to them, such as their mother. Lastly, Orange is the New Black. This show had, season one, had 13 episodes, about an hour each. Unlike Mike and Molly and Roseanne, the show was run on Netflix, so it was a lot easier to access. So Tasty appeared on screen about 50 times. Again, she wasn't a maid character. She was a side character, but she was enough of a character to get noticed for her boastfulness, her funniness. She's just a great character. Her weight was never made fun of. Her weight was only mentioned once, but it was with her and her friend and they were both on the same page about it. So it wasn't like a negative interaction. She had zero romantic interactions in the first season. And her platonic interactions, she had about 39. Six of those are positive. Six of them were negative. Again, this is based in a prison, so there were bound to be fights between everyone. So those are the negative ones. But, and the rest of them were neutral. So overall, I wish that there that we saw Tasty more. If I had watched the second or even more seasons of the show, you do see Tasty more. But as, as far as this season goes, I was happy that, I was happily surprised that she wasn't uh, center of like weight related problems. So from the research that I found so far, I've learned that sitcoms mention weight more than dramas do. Unless the character has a story that revolves around them in a drama, it's less likely to be mentioned, such as Tasty from Orange is the New Black. I learned that weight mentioned and made fun of in sitcoms, it's mostly done by the overweight characters themselves, such as in Molly, Mike and Molly and Roseanne. And lastly, that weight in dramas tend to be an issue that has stemmed since childhood and consumes their entire lives, which I do know from um, the character Kate from This Is Us. Since I've only watched three out of the four shows, I can't say my full opinions on This Is Us, but based on what I know from the show, as I stated before, Kate's character's story pretty much resolves around her weight. So I know I'll get a lot of information on my coding sheet for that. While my research is not completed yet, I do see some problems with the way that I gathered information. I admittedly got a little lazy when it came to tallying how many times Roseanne and Molly appeared on the show on screen. They both appeared on the screen so many times that I just gave up once the tallies hit around 50. I also made the conscious decision to watch only the first seasons of each show, not the first two like I mentioned. I believe that if I had the headspace, headspace to watch the second seasons as well that I would have garnered a lot more information pertaining to the representation of overweight characters, especially Tasty and Warren is a new black since I didn't get much on her from season one. 
Overall, I'd like to end my presentation by stating that I stand by my thesis and I believe that overweight women are represented differently in different genres of television. Thank you.